Ruby Volume 7 Chapter 6 was a really strong chapter in my opinion, a lot of fun, and just a very solid chapter overall. The only thing I didn't really like was um, it kind of feels like they're rehashing what they did to Yang in Volume 3, where they framed Yang for attacking Mercury at the Vital Tournament. It seems like they're doing that times 100 to Penny now. Uh, it looks like Watts is trying to do some sort of like deep fake thing and make it look like where Tyrion was attacking everybody, that he's going to deep fake it as to Penny that attacked everybody. That's the general idea, I suppose. And while the plan itself isn't bad, if, if Watts it has the talent to do that, it looks like he does, uh, it, it's kind of annoying because they did pretty much the same thing back in Volume 3, and here we are again. But we'll see. We'll see. Maybe that's not what's going on, but it certainly seems like it's going that direction. But this is a video about nuts and dolts. I just wanted to mention that at the beginning. Uh, one more thing I wanted to mention. If you watched my video yesterday, I said that I was going to have a video later out in the day. And the video I released this morning about the misprinted posters... That was supposed to come out yesterday. I scheduled it wrong. That's totally my fault. Anyways, so Nuts and Dolts, man, it's great. Because aside from the little nitpick about Watts uh, kind of rehashing that Yang thing, the other thing that was kind of uncomfortable to watch in this in this uh, chapter was Bumblebee, Blake, and Yang in this scene here. And yes, that's kind of the point that Blake was doing something kind of awkward and it was supposed to be like a cute scene between them, except it wasn't a cute scene. It was just very forest feeling and very awkward. Uh, they even look weird. Like, man, what happened to Blake? I got to be honest, in the promotional stuff for Volume 7, I thought she would pull this haircut off pretty well, but it she doesn't. She doesn't. It, 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 looks, it looks, dude, she just looks so weird. Like, it just doesn't, uh, half the time it looks like a hood. I don't know, man. It's not, it's not a very good look. And Yang's all awkward. I don't, dude, I don't really like her look anymore either. I don't know why her, like, leg is showing partially. And she's like, I don't know, man. Like, it's just a like, kind of weird outfit. Uh, but the point is, there's this scene where they're doing this little dance. And it's supposed to be kind of comedic. But it doesn't really work. Again, it's mostly awkward. And it feels very forced. To the point where even the characters are getting sick of Bumblebee in the show. And it's amazing. It's hilarious. Weiss was watching this Yang and Blake awkward dance, and she gave the most unamused expression. The characters are getting sick of Bumblebee too. This is amazing. This is hilarious. They even feel how forced and like, dude, uh, I ship Bumblebee. I've said it time and time again. Now, I'll admit, I'm, less, I'm enjoying the ship less and less and less because the chemistry that used to be there isn't really there anymore. Uh, like, dude, they used to be a pretty good ship. I would even say... A very good ship because you had these two female characters who were very strong but very different from each other. Yang, a bit more fiery, would make jokes, but she would get serious and kick some serious, you know what, if she needed to. And Blake, she was, I always like respected Blake. I lo Blake gets a lot of crap from people. I have an unpopular opinion. I think Blake is one of the better characters in the show because how many characters in the show are Blake's age and have been a part of a revolution or, you know, been a part of a. Uh, civil rights movement, and then when that was getting corrupt, she, like, left it. So that's admirable. She became a huntress. That's admirable. Uh, she left her lover just to do the right thing. That's admirable. She ended up going back and leading an army. That's admirable. Tried to take back the White Fang from being corrupt. That's admirable. Uh, a princess but doesn't act all spoiled and stuff. That's pretty admirable. Like, I like Blake for a lot of reasons. On top of the fact that her fighting style is really dope, Gamble Shroud's probably one of the coolest weapons in the show, in my opinion. And this sort of thing. So I, I've liked Blake for a long time. And I used to like Yang, but I don't like Yang anymore at all. She's just so annoying. Uh, it's like any charm that Yang had is gone, in my opinion. And that's been the case for a while. Um, and so Blake doesn't feel like the strong character she used to be. She just feels like... It feels like they're shoehorning Blake to be like Yang's gr uh, girl. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, Blake was her own strong character. Yang was her own strong character. And that's what made it amazing. And that's part of what makes Nuts and Dolts amazing. And I'll get into that in a moment. So Bumblebee went from two strong characters that kind of fit together well uh, into something where it's just like the characters aren't... They're, dude, I don't know. They made them weak and not strong. And like they need each other. They have to be together all the time. And it just... It, it feels so forced, man. It really does. You took two characters that were pretty cool, pretty impressive, pretty respectable. Like just ruined them. And now you're forcing them to still have this relationship that used to be pretty potentially good. And now it's just, again, forced the best way to do it. On top of the fact that these fanatics for Bumblebee shove it down your throat every day, nonstop. Uh, like, it's, like it's something they live for. It's, it's the weirdest thing. 
Um, it, it really is. So let's talk about nuts and bolts though, because that's actually a good ship. That's a good ship. So again, very awkward bumblebee scene here and, uh, just, oh my gosh, they just, just so awkward. So what's great is that not only did Weiss look uncomfortable watching this nonsense go on to the point where she wanted to leave so badly. She went to the movies with John and Oscar and she answered like that quick. Like you got John and Oscar right over here. Uh, John's like, Hey, I'm going to the movies with Oscar. And Weiss is like, I'm going like, you know, that, that's not the exact dialogue, but the point is Weiss could have chosen between three things. She had three options here. Uh, go to the movies with John and Oscar, go to the party for Robin or go stay with Blake and Yang, whatever the heck they're doing. Now Weiss had already voiced that she didn't really want to go to the party. Uh, so the options were really like hang around with Blake and Yang. And she was like giving that look when they were being all weird. Like she didn't want to do that. So when the other option came to go to the movies, she was like down. So Weiss is getting sick of Bumblebee. Ruby's getting sick of Bumblebee. And then we get uh, this amazing scene with Penny and Ruby. Now, I, I did miss a screenshot. There was that part right after right after Ruby is uh, all sick of Bumblebee there. We get a nice little uh, nuts and bolts scene where Penny's like, what are they talking about? And Ruby's like, I don't even know. Like, she's just so over it. She doesn't even want to deal with it. It's like, it's like, oh my God, man. It's like Ruby has been on Twitter IRL and she's seen these Bumblebee fanatics shoving it down everyone's throat going after people who they disagree with, like trying to witch hunt them, doing all these disgusting things that only very toxic, sick people would do. It's like Ruby knows how we feel now. We just want to enjoy our show. And we want to talk about ships maybe at times, but we don't want to be attacked for our opinion. Like, dude, we just want to be able to have discourse. And I feel like Ruby totally felt the way we do, man. It really felt like that. Uh, and then we, on top of it, we get a much better, much better ship uh, between nuts and dolts here, we get a really cute nuts and dolts moment. Like, there's multiple nuts and dolts, nuts and dolts moments in this chapter, and I forget if I said this already, but uh, nuts and dolts has been a pretty cool ship since you know, since literally like Penny and Ruby met way back in the earlier volumes. And then, of course, after volume three, it became not really possible anymore. But then there was that chibi episode with nuts and dolts, and that chibi episode, so adorable, so cute, probably one of the best chibi episodes to date. And now I'll explain why Nuts and Dolts is so much better than Bumblebee. So there's actually chemistry here. There is actually chemistry between Penny and Ruby. Chemistry that Bumblebee doesn't seem to have. You know, when you have like these adorable scenes between Penny and Ruby, it just feels so natural. It really does. It feels natural and it feels wonderful. And Blake and Yang just feel awkward and forest. And people would use the excuse, you know, oh, Blake and Yang have been through a lot. Dude, Ruby literally witnessed Penny get ripped apart in front of her own eyes. And she was crying. She was, dude, traumatized for that. So I'd argue Ruby and Penny have been through a lot too, if not more. Like literally Penny should not have come back from that. Ruby witnessed her get minecrafted in front of her in one of the most brutal ways you possibly can. We're not talking about simply you're 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 done you're no longer existing no we're talking ripped apart brutally and not just in front of you but in front of thousands tens of thousands hundred thousands of people that witnessed it maybe millions even if it was projected all across remnant i don't know the population in remnant i mean it doesn't look like there's that many people when you look at the cities but you know that's the animation how many people really live in remnant i don't know i, I um but the point is a lot of people witnessed that too so it's a terrible thing so ruby and penny have definitely been through Terrible things. I could take it even further. I mean, just Penny's existence, the way she is, that would be a heck of a lot to deal with. So I'm making these points because a lot of people that are the fanatical side of Bumblebee, a lot of those fanatics say, you know, Yang has been through so much and so has Blake, and that's why they are the way they are. So I guess in a way, they admit the ship isn't really as good as it used to be either when they use that argument. But the point is, Penny's been through a lot. Her existence in of itself is being through a lot on top of being ripped apart in front of Ruby, on top of having to come back and Ruby witnessing all that, they've been through a lot too. Maybe even even more, you could argue. But the difference is, Ruby still carries on. She doesn't become this weak character. She gets stronger, more independent. She had a scene in Volume 6 where she was telling Crow, you know, she wanted to do her own thing. Now, while I thought that scene wasn't amazing, to be honest, it does show that Ruby's maturing and she is this strong-willed huntress but she's also adorable. She can also be compassionate and kind and also be strong and a leader when she needs to. And so can Penny. 
So can Penny. Penny, very compassionate, very kind-hearted, wants to help people out, but she knows when to be serious, and she's a strong character. Ruby and Penny are both very strong female characters, and they also happen to have great chemistry together. It doesn't feel forced. It feels natural. And this is really a wonderful ship to the point where I might even say I like it more than White Rose now. And what I, I, like some of the ships I've always liked the most, honestly, were like White Rose, Bumblebee. I would uh, also, I like Strawberry, what's it called? Strawberry Shortcake. I like Neo and Ruby. I think there's actually potential there. I obviously like Neo and Roman. I like uh, Arcos, Rest in Peace Pura. There's a lot of ships I like, but uh, Nuts and Dolts, it really, it really does seem like it's starting to take the cake, man. Uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Now, I, I, I do still fully expect uh, Bumblebee to become canon because there's just, there's just too many hints there. And that's part of the reason why I think it's not even that good of a ship anymore either. Uh, and I mentioned this in another video. They've been leaving hints for like three years, like little bits and pieces. There's a point where it's like, I feel like I'm being strung along and I don't even really care that much anymore because, man, in three years, guess what? There's a lot going on in my life, and that's the case for all of us watching. But apparently not really for the Bumblebee fanatics because you go see what they're doing, and they just seem obsessed with Bumblebee. They don't care if they've been strung along for a ride for three years. They're still as into it uh, as ever, if not more than ever. And the reasonable people out there who actually have things to do in their life and can enjoy other things see potential in these other ships, these characters developing, and, you know, we have our opinions on things. And we're pretty open-minded and accepting about other people as well. And that's why we all seem to get along. And that's why the Bumblebee fanatics seem like they're their own group. They don't want to get along with everyone. They want to only get along with other fanatics. And they treat other people that way. It's very obvious. So that's really all there is to say about that, I suppose. I think I'll make another video on this chapter talking more about, like, Robin and stuff. But I really wanted to make the focus of this uh, Bumblebee, Nuts and Dolts, and why Nuts and Dolts is great, why Bumblebee has used to be good. I don't want to say great, but pretty dang good, and could be great. And now it's like almost bad, like cringe levels of forest. But it still has potential to come back around. We'll see if it does. And ultimately, what's hilarious is this episode, even the characters seemed like they were getting sick of Bumblebee. And that's great. I gotta say, Rooster Teeth, you did good on this episode.